Hello and welcome to another episode of Doug Formative. Today I wanted to show you an updated version of Inkscape for Beginners. Today I'm mainly going to be focusing on keyboard shortcuts that I find myself using on a regular basis. Uh, so without further ado, let me go ahead and get started. The first one is what I like to call the universal undo command, and that is holding control and hitting Z on the keyboard. So for instance, maybe you move an object off to the side or a couple of them and you didn't mean to do that and you just want to get things back to where they were before just hold control and hit Z on the keyboard multiple times until you get things back to where you need them to be okay the next one is if you notice on my canvas I have my page border showing some people don't like to keep that on there and uh, if you want to move it off to the side you can if you're on a desktop you can just click in on the mouse wheel and drag it over to the side and that way you have a clean canvas area to work with on your design. However, if you are like me and you like to keep it there as a size reference, sometimes your designs end up coming all the way off to the side. You know, it can be all over your canvas. Sometimes you just want to center back in on your page and it's hard to find. If you just hit five on your number pad, it will zoom in perfectly on that page border. So that's just a helpful tool to, uh, to just find your center point one more time. Now the next one is if you want to get rid of your page border you can easily get to your document properties by holding control shift and hitting D on the keyboard. I can't do that while I'm recording my screen so I would have to come up here to file and actually click in on document properties but as you can see the keyboard shortcut displays right here shift control D right there. So I've got my document properties right here. If you want to get rid of your page border, just uncheck the box that says show page border. And now you have your clean canvas area to work on. The next one is just holding control will lock an object onto its vertical or horizontal plane. So say for instance, you have your objects aligned. So I, now I have them aligned on the horizontal axis. But I want to make some adjustments. I want to change how much they're overlapping. If I hold control and click and drag, it will lock it onto that vertical plane. So I don't have to worry about going back and aligning them. Yeah, you'll see it jump a little bit. If your mouse is moving just a little bit too much up or down, you'll see that it will jump, but it will still lock back onto that same horizontal plane or vertical plane if you want to move it up and down it will lock in on the vertical plane as well. So let me hold control and hit Z to undo that. The next one isn't really a keyboard shortcut, but there is a keyboard shortcut that applies to this. I like to use grid lines in my designs just to maintain consistency, uh, you know, when it comes to horizontal, vertical, or uh, an angle. You know, sometimes I use angles in my designs and I want to maintain that same angle throughout. If you notice on your canvas, on the top you have a ruler and over here on the left as well. If you click and drag anywhere in this ruler area and drag out, you will get a guideline that you can use as a reference. And if you have your uh, snapping tools enabled, you can actually snap anchor points or nodes onto that grid line so you can get a consistent clean design. So dragging from the side will give you a vertical one, dragging down from the top will give you a horizontal one. Now there's two ways to get an angled one. If you want like a 45 degree angled guideline, you can come up here in the corner and click and drag out. It will give you a 45 degree guideline. If you want one going the other way, you can actually come up here to the top right of your canvas. And now you have a negative 45 degree guideline. If you want an angle other than that, you can double click on any of these guidelines and it will bring up this menu that allows you to change the angle. So maybe you want a like a negative 15 degree guideline or maybe you want a 60 degree guideline. It will adjust it to whatever you need it to be and also gives you some other options. If you don't want the guidelines to be blue, maybe your design is blue and you can't see the guideline over your design, you can change it to whatever color you want it to be. And uh, that is definitely a helpful 
tip. Now the keyboard shortcut that I was talking about, sometimes when you're using guidelines, you wanna just hide them temporarily so you can see what your design looks like at this point without having all those lines covering it up. If you hold shift on the keyboard and hit the backslash button, it will hide them. And then you can bring them back by hitting shift and backslash one more time. Now on my keyboard, it's the button that's next to the delete button the, to the left of delete. Okay, so the next one is when you wanna combine two objects, there is a very easy shortcut to use and that is you know maybe for instance you want to create like a cartoony looking duck and you have this oval shape that kind of resembles a duck bill but you're doing more of like a silhouette than you are like a realistic looking duck so maybe you want to combine this object with this other object here Hold shift and click on that so both of the objects are selected. Hold control shift and hit plus on the keyboard and that will combine those two objects. I'm going to go ahead and hold control and hit Z to undo that. Now maybe you want to cut an object out of another one. I'm going to select this brown circle here, raise it up to the top. And I'm going to shift click on the orange circle, hold control shift and hit minus and that will cut whatever that one object is out of the other one. But it's always going to use the one on top that will affect the one that's underneath it. So let me click uh, Control Z to undo that. The next one is sometimes you, you need the shape that is overlapping. You know, you don't want to just cut it out completely. So instead of holding Control Shift and hitting minus, you can hold control and hit the forward slash button. And what that does is it cuts a line into the object. Wherever the outside border of the other object was, and it gives you a whole new object over here that you may want to use for something else. You know, there's many different reasons, and there's plenty of times where that comes in handy because you don't want to just delete an object all the way especially if you are using the golden ratio like if you've ever used the golden ratio to create a design like a logo or a character or anything like that uh, being able to use that other shortcut which is called the division and if you notice if you go up to path that's division control and the forward slash button the other one where you cut into objects is difference and Union is the other one where you're combining two objects granted. There's some other options in here But you know, those are the three that I have a tendency to use more frequently than anything else Now there's a couple couple of other ones that are just single letter Keyboard shortcuts and those are some of the tools that you have over here on the left hand side now I already have the selector tool uh, chosen but for instance, if I have something else chosen and I hit the letter S on the keyboard, it will give me my selector tool back. I use the Bezier pen a lot. If you hit B on the keyboard, that will give you your Bezier pen. Uh, the gradient tool, when you're working with gradients, um, for instance, let's change this orange object here to a gradient by selecting it and uh, that's a stroke paint. I need to fill paint to be a gradient. And so with this gradient being here, you want to adjust the gradient, like the angle or the color of the gradient. If you hit G on the keyboard, that will give you your gradient tool that you can make whatever adjustments that you want. Uh, let's see, what's next? The dropper tool. Okay, so maybe you don't want this gradient. Maybe you want it to be a solid color, but you want it to be a color that you're already using on your design. If you hit D on the keyboard, that will give you your dropper tool. And then you can click on another color and it will make that selected object the color that you clicked on. Sometimes you need to alternate between two tools quickly. So for instance, there are times where I need to alternate between the selector tool and the dropper tool. With an object selected, you can hit D on the keyboard. And if you hit D again, it will go back to the, to the uh, selector tool. 
and hit D again, drop or tool. And as you can see, I'm just, I'm just hitting the same button over and over to alternate between those two. And that has been a huge time saver, especially when you're working with, uh, like creating an abstract, uh, an abstract background or something like that. A lot of times you'll need to duplicate an object really quickly. So maybe you want to cut this shape out of the orange circle here, but you still need to have this available. If you select an object, hold control and hit D on the keyboard, that will give you a duplicate copy of that. So you can then hold shift, click on the circle here, hold control shift and minus to cut into it. And now you have that shape cut out of it, but you still have this other one here. Sorry, I had to restart Inkscape because it keeps freezing up on me for some reason. Okay, so there is another way to duplicate objects. Sometimes you need a lot of a single object and there is a quick way to make mass copies of that. If you click in on an object and you hit the space bar, it will duplicate that object over and over again. And that is an amazing shortcut when you need a lot of an item, especially maybe you're creating like a night sky and you have a star that you want to duplicate to paste across the entire sky. That is a really quick and easy way to do that. Uh, so I'm going to set one off to the side and delete all the rest of these. Now, maybe you don't want them overlapping, so you know, just you can space them out. So if you hit spacebar, move the next one where you actually need it to go, hit spacebar again, drag the other one, you know, and so on. And uh, that way they're not all overlapping and you end up having to move them around afterwards anyway. Now, on a, on a desktop, in order to move your canvas around, like I said before, if you click in on the mouse wheel, you can just drag your canvas around wherever you want it to be. But if you're working on a laptop, which a lot of people work only on laptops and don't have a desktop, you can do the same thing by holding control and the space bar and just dragging your finger around on your trackpad and that will perform the same exact function. Don't click in on the trackpad, just move your finger on it and it will drag your canvas around just like I'm doing here. That is really all I can think of. Those are the main ones that I find myself using on a regular basis. I hope you guys have found this valuable. And until my next video, you guys take care.